So this is it off. Let's turn it on. So you hear how much of a difference that really makes when it comes to our stereo perspective in this song. Hey everyone, my name's Owen and I produce under the alias Nitro X. Reason to invite me back on the channel today to showcase with you some of my favorite things about the brand new Reason 13 update and how I've been implementing it in my music. Before we get into it, let me show you the track that I'll be breaking down today. The Polytone Synthesizer is an analog emulated synthesizer plugin and it is amazing. It's probably one of my, if not my favorite reason synths right now. So let's jump in and let me show you what I did with it. So the first sound I made for this project is kind of this house style EDM arpeggio sound. All I did was just slow down the attack a little bit. I turned up the filter envelope just to kind of get that like bouncing kind of sound. So then once I did that, I decided how can I take this to another level? And the great thing about Polytone is it has two layers. It has the A section and then it has the B oscillator section. And both of these have two oscillators. So there's a ton of flexibility in any sound that you want to make. Jumping over to the B layer here. So you have a couple modes in Polytone when you're mixing your sounds. You got single, so that's just gonna be one of your oscillators, which you can select here. And then mix and then morph, which is a more complicated mode where it kind of morphs between each sound. So this is all in all pretty simple. And I just had experimented with using the LFO to modulate the shape of the sine wave. So you can hear this is just with sine one. And then I added just a little bit of saw in there because I felt like it was it, it's very just kind of sparkle on top. So I layered this an octave down to kind of give it some body. And then I turned the LFO all the way down so it's modulating it 100%. It almost kind of sounds like a sparkly delay coming through the background. So this actually inspired me to add a ripply delay onto this sound. So here's what I came up with. I really wanted to capitalize on that kind of sparkly sound. So I left a lot of the highs in the delay and just did a simple 316th. And I kind of wanted to lean into that vintage sound of the polytone. So I added a little bit of wobble on the delay, which essentially adds just a little bit of pitch modulation. And then the noise modulation is super cool on Ripley. I just added a little bit of drive to it as well. And then I made sure to make it nice and stereo because I want this sound to be really wide. Both of my polytone oscillator sections are all the way stereo spread to get a big kind of arp pad layer out of this thing. I added a sidechain tool to carve out space when the kick comes in and it also helps establish a bit more of a groove. Once you hear this come in, it kind of gives a bit more of a perspective. So the other cool thing about Polytone is this age knob here. Because it's modeled after kind of an analog old piece of equipment, you can make it have a bit more of an unstable kind of sound. When I got into the drop, I really wanted this to kind of like move around pitch wise. So there were a couple ways I implemented that. The first one was the age knob. So to lean into that even more, I went with the oscillator pitch modulator on A. And I just brought it down so the LFO was kind of modulating the pitch of the saw just a little bit. And it's kind of like diving off at points and it sounds super cool in the mix. Let's take a listen. And then did a little bit of filter modulation as well leading up to the drop. 
So that's pretty much this patch that I made in Polytone. However, I want to show you guys the amazing keys presets that I found in Polytone. Smooth kind of pad and key sounds. And they're amazing fillers, especially in pop music and even like in garage like this. And they just layer out so beautifully with this arpeggio. So yeah, I just love how these chord patches have this really warm sound to them. It's almost like playing with an old Juno. Definitely go play around with Polytone, but let's move on to the brand new tools that are available in Reason. I typically use the gain tool for like two things. So the first is usually automation of vocals or other instruments. So I don't clutter up my mixer with creating all these extra buses for volume control. Second thing I like to use it for is very similar to volume automation, but it relates to cutting out the audio. And this is really important. If you're creating almost any genre, you want to use silence to your advantage. Without it, everything's gonna seem like it's on the same playing field and you're not gonna have these sections that are strong and quiet. So right before the vocals come in, you'll hear this kind of breakout. So everything kind of stopped and we let that fill really shine so we could jump into the next section. So how I did this is I just made sure to route all my keys and everything with a long tail to one bus. And I just hit edit automation on my gain tool. You can see that I automated it down and then kind of swelled it back up into the next section. I also did this right before the drop to make sure we have a nice cut of silence. So the drop comes in and punches really hard. So the next tool I want to go over is the stereo tool. Reason has done an amazing job with their algorithm on this one. It sounds super good. So there's a couple implementations of the stereo tool on this track. Uh, the first and probably most noticeable is the splice vocal. This is with an off. That's an on. Usually you want your vocals sitting pretty central in your mix because everything else is kind of surrounding. But I decided for this one, since it's like the garage kind of sound, I thought it would be kind of cool to have a bit more thickness on the vocals. The other stereo tool I use on this track will be on the bass. And this is also another polytone patch. And this is a great example of when you should use the low bypass on the stereo tool. It's already automatically bypassed at 40 hertz. So you aren't gonna really get too bad of phase issues, but I recommend on bass bringing it up a little bit just to make sure. Now you're gonna hear this is gonna completely change and transform this bass sound in our mix and make it so much more full, especially in the drop. So this is it off. Let's turn it on. And here's it in the mix with it on and off. Here's it with it on. Off. On. Do you hear how much of a difference that really makes when it comes to our stereo perspective in this song? It's adding so much space to our mix. And especially when that bass is just on its own, it's really letting it shine. One note I do want to make about the stereo tool is that it does use comb filtering and that it should never be used in mastering and should only be used really in sound design. Don't use it to control with. On your mix bus, you would never want to add the stereo tool. You would always want to use the stereo imager and it's going to add some space to our mix without damaging any of the phase. <laughs> Now, I don't recommend ever even putting a stereo imager on your master. In some cases, it is needed and it does help. But overall, what I've been taught is that if your mix needs a stereo imager on your master, your mix probably sucks. And you probably need to actually go back and make sure you have enough width, go back and put the stereo tool on something that's maybe mono when it shouldn't be mono, do more complicated panning, maybe do some panning automation, try and get some more space out of your mix before you just slap an imager on your master. The stereo tool is amazing. It's just important to remember when and where to use it and not use it to control stereo width, but rather to create it. 
And then we have the sidechain tool. For this song, I'm just kind of going for a typical sidechain. And I can change how that sidechain feels just by playing around with this grab. Now, definitely on to my favorite part of the Reason update, which is Ripley. I've been using it genuinely in every song, and I used to use the Echo a lot, and it still has definitely great purpose and uses, but Ripley has kind of replaced that in my workflow and is now my main delay for almost everything. Kind of reminds me of like a Valhalla vintage verb, but way more versatile and has a ton of unique features that I want to talk about. For the first example, I want to show this delay I made on the vocal chop. All I really did was modulate and change the initial Ripley patch that comes when you load it. And I just made it a little bit longer of a tail, added some distortion. I added a little bit of ping pong, a bunch of reverb on that too. And then I turned up the ducker because I want it to pop in really after the vocal is done. Another very cool feature about this device is its external feedback loop. It's super cool and you can use it to create even crazier sounds beyond what's even capable inside Ripley and it is capable of so much. On this sound, it's actually in the same section of the song when everything kind of opens up. And this one is a bit more aggressive and I really wanted it to drown out the actual chop. So I didn't do any ducking on it. It's also made from the initial preset. Uh, I often do that when I should probably just reset the device. But beyond that, the main aspect of this delay is that I am using the chorus ensemble on the return send. So on the back, you can see the external feedback loop. I'm sending it into this quartet. It's adding kind of this sparkly chorus sound. It's a huge, like big wide sound, which is what I want for this section. My other favorite implementation of this is using format shifting with the feedback loop. All you have to do, I would just grab a Neptune and we're gonna route it into the send and return. Make sure to turn everything off and then turn your format down just a just a hair, because as it loops, it's gonna continually turn the format down by intervals of five. And so if we turn the format all the way down, it's just gonna start sounding messy. So you're kind of going down, summer, summer, summer. We can do it even more aggressively, for example. It can be a really cool alternate way to like spice up your delays, not have them just be like a regular ping pong delay or filter delay. I wanna put a pause on this and jump back for a second to get a bit of perspective on why we're caring so much about creating sonic spaces, stereo imaging and reverb, because it can be easy to just throw reverb on a track or say, oh, everything sounds better wide without understanding why we're doing it. Perspective in a track is extremely vital to maintaining the dynamic range and energy of a song. They're both tools that can help create a big space but if you never take them away you'll never have the contrast of a dry central sound that can help your reverb and your stereo width feel even that much bigger so the last thing I want to talk about in this video for the reason update but certainly not least is the new MIDI editor so I play these chords on piano, but I wanted to make sure that they were nice and tight, so I quantized them. However, now they don't really have any feeling to them. They just kind of hit on each beat. Now there's nothing wrong with this sound. We could totally leave it, but a cool thing I like to try, especially on like a more intimate section, is using the randomize position function. So you can change the range over here of how much you want to randomize. Yeah. It has a more realistic and natural played sound, which pairs perfectly with Polytone's vintage vibe. The other cool MIDI function I wanna cover that I'm finding super useful is the ramp. So if we go into our buildup section right here, so the buildup has this 909 snare on a Kong patch, which sounds like this. Right now, all that's on it is a simple pitch modulation that's making it rise in pitch to create a little more tension. So all we 
need to do now is create a ramp with this. And normally this would be a little bit more difficult. I'd have to try and kind of draw in a ramp, but you know, I could never really get it right. But instead we're going to right click on our notes. We're going to hit note tools, note velocity, and it's going to create a little ramp just like that, which will fit perfect with our buildup. Let's take a listen. Thank you guys so much for joining me on this deep dive into Reason. If you're still here, I really appreciate it. There are so many more tutorials that I know you can learn from on this channel with great people and great advice. So make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Keep creating and stay inspired.